This has been one of those crazy weeks, a week when stuff you thought could never happen happened. I mean, Congressman Joe Barton apologized to BP and then unapologized and then said he'd been misconstrued. Uh, Sarah Palin said she smoked marijuana and didn't like it. And the USA came back from two goals down to tie Slovenia in the World Cup. Then they totally got robbed on that third goal, which got taken away from them. But my favorite impossible becomes reality tale from the news this week involves Mr. Impossible himself, Illinois Congressman and Senate candidate Mark Kirk. Mr. Kirk has already distinguished himself by being caught telling at least 10 different falsehoods about his military career. Mr. Kirk has claimed that the Navy named him Intelligence Officer of the Year which did not happen. He also claimed that as a member of the Naval Reserve, he survived live enemy fire in Kosovo, which never happened, in Iraq, which never happened, and in Kandahar, Afghanistan, where Congressman Kirk has told reporters it both happened and it didn't happen. Mark Kirk's untruthiness is amazing enough on its own terms. Guy's running for Senate. But when he tries to explain away his untruthiness, that's really when the magic happens. Because the only thing Mark Kirk does with more pizzazz than making stuff up is trying to explain away the stuff he is accused of making up. And this crazy week, Mark Kirk managed to raise the bar on that. He really did. The New York Times reporting that there are serious questions about another part of Mark Kirk's resume. He claims to have taught nursery school, middle school, and high school, though the Times reported those engagements were very, very short-term things. Mr. Kirk says he taught the older kids during the 1982-83 school year in London at a private school called the Milestone Prep School. Mr. Kirk also says he worked in the nursery school of the Forest Home Chapel in Ithaca, New York, during his last year of college in 1981. For the record, a chapel spokesperson tells the Times that Mr. Qu Mr. Kirk was, quote, never, ever considered a teacher. But let's keep going. Here's how Congressman Kirk described his career as an educator on the floor of the House a few years back. I served as a teacher, and I remember the kids who were the brightest lights of our country's future. And I also remember those who bore scrutiny as people who might bring a gun to class. Now, which of the kids he taught do you think Mr. Kirk remembered as threatening to show up in class with a gun? Would it be the tiny tots in the church nursery, the two, three, and four-year-olds? Or would it be the teenagers in England? Turns out he was blaming the tiny tots, those gun-toting rugrats. The New York Times reports, quote, his spokeswoman said the congressman was referring to nursery school students in Ithaca, not his students in London, during that speech on the House floor in 2006. Mark Kirk running for Senate in part on the basis of his credentials as a former nursery school teacher, even though the nursery school he says he worked at says he wasn't a teacher there. And if we believe he was a teacher there, it was for one year part time while he was in college. And he says while he taught there, he worried about the munchkins packing heat. Three year olds with guns. If you think you've got to work hard to believe the Mark Kirk for Senate campaign, just think how hard they're working to churn out their explanations. And the Kirk staff has kept it up, now posting what they're calling a correction to the New York Times story. Quote, before and after publication, the Kirk campaign made it clear that the clause brightest lights of our country's future referenced nursery school kids in Ithaca, New York, while the bore scrutiny clause referenced a few kids at Milestone School in London. As we told the reporter, Mr. Kirk taught mainly English and some foreign students at Milestone. A few of the kids he taught came from difficult family backgrounds, and he was surprised by what they saw at home and regarded as normal behavior. The Times mistake is unfortunate, but sometimes mistakes do happen. The Times mistake. He'd know about the mistakes thing. Mark Kirk, you are amazing. The newest spin, if you can follow this, is that Mark Kirk was not blaming the three-year-olds for inviting suspicion about their con concealed carry status at nursery school. He was blaming the British middle school students for inviting that suspicion. At a time when the number of armed British households was roughly on par with the population of real leprechauns in Ireland. As of this evening, the New York Times has not backed down on its original story about Mr. Kirk blaming the toddlers for the guns. If they do retract their reporting, we will let you know. Meanwhile, we will continue to enjoy Congressman Mark Kirk and all his amazing, amazing stories.